Sometimes we're asked to count the total number of oxygen atoms represented by a formula for a compound. We'll show you how to do this with some examples. We'll start with a simple formula, N2O5. The formula for a compound contains element symbols and commonly contains little numbers. Little numbers written to the bottom right of element symbols in a formula are called subscripts. Sub means under, and script means to write. The subscripts in a formula show the number of each kind of atom in a molecule of a compound. A subscript always tells us the number of atoms of the element to the left of it. So the formula N2O5 means that one molecule of this compound contains two nitrogen atoms and five oxygen atoms. A molecule of N2O5 can be represented like this. Notice there are two nitrogen atoms and five oxygen atoms in this molecule. Here is the formula for a compound that contains brackets. We're asked to count the number of oxygen atoms in this formula. This 3 to the bottom right of the O means there are 3 oxygen atoms inside the brackets. This 2 to the bottom right of the brackets means that subscripts inside the bracket must be multiplied by 2 in order to get the number of atoms of an element. To find the number of oxygen atoms, we go 3 times 2 equals 6. So there are six oxygen atoms in the formula CaNO32. In general, we can say that the number of oxygen atoms in a formula where O is inside the brackets equals the subscript to the right of the oxygen atom times the subscript outside the bracket, just to the right of it. Let's do another example. We're asked for the number of oxygen atoms in the formula FeOH3, or FeOH in brackets 3. Looking at the oxygen atom inside the brackets, we see that there is no subscript to the right of it. If no subscript is written to the right of a symbol, it means there is one atom of that element. So we know there is one atom of oxygen inside the brackets. To find the total number of oxygen atoms, we multiply 1 by the subscript outside the right bracket. So we go 1 times 3 equals 3 oxygen atoms. So we can say that the formula FeOH3 contains 3 oxygen atoms. Sometimes we're asked to find the number of oxygen atoms in a formula which has a big number written to the left side of it like the big green 3 in this example. A big number in front of a formula is called a coefficient. A coefficient stands for the number of molecules of the compound present. So the 3 in front of Cr2O3 here means 3 molecules of Cr2O3 are represented here. Let's focus on the molecule on top. The subscript 3 on the oxygen tells us that this molecule contains 3 oxygen atoms. Now we'll focus on the molecule in the center. We can see that this molecule also has 3 oxygen atoms. And the molecule on the bottom also has 3 oxygen atoms. Each molecule has 3 oxygen atoms, and there are 3 molecules. So there is a total of 3 times 3 which is equal to 9 oxygen atoms represented here. Now that you better understand what a big number in front, or coefficient, means, we'll show you a quicker way to do this. Because the subscript to the right of the oxygen tells us the number of oxygen atoms in one molecule of Cr2O3, and the coefficient tells us the total number of Cr2O3 molecules present, to find the total number of oxygen atoms present, we take the subscript 3 and multiply it by the coefficient 3. 
which is equal to 9 oxygen atoms in total. Let's do one more example of this type. We're asked how many oxygen atoms are represented by 4MN2O7. We take the subscript 7 and multiply it by the coefficient 4. 7 times 4 equals 28, so 28 oxygen atoms are represented here. Now we'll do an example with both brackets and a coefficient in front. We're asked how many oxygen atoms are represented here. In this type of problem, we always start with the subscript to the right of the oxygen atom. In this case, it is a 3. The first thing we do is multiply this number by the subscript outside the right bracket. In this case, it's a 2. So it's 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. This means there are 6 oxygen atoms in one molecule of ZnNO3 2. The last step is to multiply this 6 by the coefficient in front of the formula. In this case, it's a 3. So we go 6 times 3 equals 18. So there is a total of 18 oxygen atoms represented here. To review, for formulas with both brackets and a coefficient, we start with the subscript on the oxygen, and the first thing we do is multiply it by the subscript just outside the right bracket. And lastly, we take the resulting number and multiply it by the coefficient in front of the formula. This will give us the total number of oxygen atoms. Remember, in this type of problem, it is important that we always multiply by the subscript outside the right bracket first. And lastly, multiply the answer we got for this by the coefficient in front.